welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like always, I have a very special guest for you, Serene Renee, author and writer. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Miss Serene Renee, who's a writer and author. She's with us for the next 30 minutes, and she's finally here in the hot seat. <laughs> Serene, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, it's Thank great you. to have you here. We love entrepreneurs. We love empowering females who are doing things in the community. So that's definitely you, because you wear many hats. You write. <laughs> You're an author, you're a poet, you're a model, you're a mother. So we're going to cover a little bit of everything. But before we go straight into it, kind of just take us back a little bit and tell us who is Serene Renee? Oh, that's a loaded question. Yes, um, we love those. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am a very simple woman, even though I have many hats. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't claim them as just me. I'm... One of those hardworking people that just has dreams, and I try to encourage other people mm -hmm. to go after their dreams in the process. So, yes, you know, I have these books and have the play and the modeling thing, but, you know, overall, it's just I, I'd rather just be known as an inspiration to other people. And as long as I can continue to help, I'll continue to do. You know, I get, I get a lot of, oh, you did what? Mm -hmm. Yay! Okay, so... How'd you do it? And I sit down and have that conversation and, and explain to them step by step. You know, I, I love to see people live, you know, not just breathe day to day, but actually go out and, and live. live on purpose, you know. So that's, that's pretty much who I am. I'm very simple. So, so how did this all get started for you, even before the books? When did you realize that you had a, a love for writing? I started writing poetry around 14 years old and it became more of a diary. It was a freedom, an escape, when you know those awkward teenage years when you don't feel like many people are understanding you and I had this, all this creativity. I've been creative all my life and mm -hmm. from making my doll clothes to building shelves when I wasn't supposed to. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. Um, hammer and nails were normally hidden in my house. Um, That's so funny. <laughs> seriously. So I, one day I picked up this pen and this paper and it became life. It became expression. It became joy. I started reading books. I was the kid that would hide the textbook, you know, with the, my novels that I was reading and the mm -hmm. text, don't do this. But I, would, I was constantly around words. I just loved the expression of it, mm -hmm. even if I didn't feel comfortable physically saying it, I could write it. And mm -hmm. there was no judgment. There was no, you shouldn't say that. So as when I turned 18, everybody thought I was just going to model at that point. You know, most people didn't know that I wrote, but I actually joined the Air Force. So yeah, so yeah, so I, I joined the Air Force. I, I um, did that for a number of years. And then um, I decided that I was going to live a little bit and pursue some of my dreams and go after and, and indulge in my goals. And I sat down one day and ran to Best Buy, bought a laptop and sat down and wrote Call Me Queen in three wow. weeks. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm a pretty determined woman when I want to do it. I do you want it. to do something. Yeah, I don't, I don't linger. And then it was like, okay, wow, I have this book. Now what? And um, I self-publish. I, I learned the process. It was not easy. I've had some very long days and longer, longer, longer nights. I still have very long mm -hmm. nights, but um, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, you know, I go to have book signings and book launches and things like that, and people are just like, "Wow, I relate to that story so much." It's helping me heal, mm -hmm. you know, because some of the, the topics that I talk about and call me queen 
it's seven short stories of seven different women and girls with seven different issues and trials that they have to go through and overcome so after I wrote the book I saw a um, an ad for one act plays and I said you know what if I wrote a book, I could surely write a play. So I sat down and... <laughs> you wrote a play? I wrote a play. And that was your very first play? That was my very first play. And I wrote a one-woman, one-show, one-act play. I was the woman. I had never performed before. So another thing I was going to ask them, like, he, what about your stage performance? Yeah, I did. And people loved it. And I was very surprised at myself. I, I tend to throw myself and just say, you know what, Serene, you got to figure it out because nobody's gonna figure it out for you. And if you don't wanna do it, don't do it. If you wanna do it, then do it. Mm -hmm. So I did it and my mom, I remember my mom asking me, Serene, can you act? I said, well, we're gonna find out tonight. That's the funny thing, it's like, okay, <laughs> we can make this happen. <laughs> we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna throw you. Sometimes you just have to jump off that cliff, hang out on that limb and say, you know what? My faith has to get me through this because it wouldn't have been a dream if I couldn't do it. You know, I'm not, it's nothing's placed in us that we can't pursue and, and conquer. So all we have to do is find that determination to get that done. Teach yourself, learn, go to school, do what you need to do, but pursue it. Because there's nothing worse than being 97 years old and you look back with a sea of regrets in your memories. So I'd rather look back and say, you know, remember that time I, I tried? I tried and it might not have worked out so well, but you know. What? Nobody can say you didn't. Nobody can say I didn't do it, but it actually worked out really well. And um, I wrote another play, and it debuts in a couple weeks. And, and we'll touch upon that, <laughs> but I want to go back to the part when, so now that you've written something, after you did it and wrote for the very first time and acted for the first time, looking back at those, can you see your progression? I can definitely see my progression. And maybe even laugh at your first I can, of the I, productions? I can laugh at certain aspects. Like, to this day, I hate formatting books. I taught myself how to do it. Thank you, YouTube. Um, but I said to myself, you know what? Either I can hire someone to do it, and then I'll always have to hire someone to do it, because I knew Call Me Queen wasn't going to be my only book. Um, mm -hmm. I knew A Goddess Dreams was coming out. I wrote Call Me Queen with the expectation of it being a continuation, kind of like a cliffhanger and continuing the story. So I said I can either contract out or I can teach myself. And I taught myself and I didn't realize that when I made that decision, I would not sleep for seven days. I might have did a combination of sorts, but now I can do it myself, you know, after I threw myself into flaming fire. But when I went to, um, I actually was writing A Goddess Dreams, and I was in the process of it, which is the follow-up to Call Me Queen. I had all this poetry, and it was bringing all this writing and stuff out of me to and fro on trains, and I, I write a lot on a train. Mm -hmm. I just stare at my phone, and I write in a little app, and I, I keep it going. And that's when Indigo came out. Well, hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break, so I want to hear all about that. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Back here watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Serene, before we took the break, Indigo. Yes. Just about to get into that. <laughs> How did that all come about? Indigo is all poetry. So I decided when I was going to be an author that all of my books would have poetry in it. Okay. Call Me Queen has seven short stories. All short stories lead in with a poem. So it gives you a little small little tidbit of what might occur in the book. I wrote it first person as the character in the book. A Goddess Dreams has two poems, A Goddess and then Dreams. 
so technically a goddess dreams is a poem book with the novel wrapped around, around it. it yeah um indigo though it's it's all 44 original poems and i am a little difficult and i don't title my poems i just don't i never have when i was younger i did and then i realized my friends would sit there and stare at the title and try to figure out what it might it's be. It's like labeling it. Right. So I just took the label off. Because I don't necessarily just write for myself. I write for the reader. So however it relates to you, I call them heart inscriptions. However it relates to your heart, that's how I want you to take it. So I, I could be talking about a pillow and they think I'm talking about an actual person. It's however it relates to your spirit and your heart. So when I wrote... Uh, a goddess dreams I took a small break because I was doing still promotional stuff for call me queen and um, I was doing modeling stuff and I was steadily writing in between mm -hmm. sets and photo shoots and runway and fashion week and I said I got to do something with all of this so I came up with indigo and um, I love indigo because it's my first poem book mm -hmm. and when I first told the three people, because I don't really share much with people, the three people that I was writing a book, they automatically, oh, it's going to be poetry. And then I said, no, nah, it's a novel. They said, well, why'd you do that? I said, because I can. Right. Right. So <laughs> the second book is actually the, the poem. And I like to say indigo because it's like the depth of where I was in that time space. So the indigo is... is is a little bit deep it's most what people don't know of me because I use poetry as more of a diary very rarely do I write for other people but I can sit there and, and look at a couple interact and write as if I am that person and become in that space with really? them yeah it's and I write really quickly like it, the average poem could take me 10 minutes so you just get into that headspace I just get into it and it that's why the train is perfect because you I really zone don't out. I zone out and New York really helped me because I was living in the DC area for a while so when I moved back a couple of years ago and decided that I was just gonna you know be a full-on writer that six train that local six train really did help because I have nothing but time True. <laughs> nothing but time and crowds and people and different energies and things like that so I use it all as creativity and especially music Absolutely. How would you describe your style, though? If someone were to analyze you and do a synopsis of you and your writing and your writing style, how would you say they would describe you? I guess I would have to say soulful, spirit-filled, because everything is genuine. Everything is coming from the heart. Everything is coming from a sensitive, sweet place in me even if they haven't been invited to it before mm -hmm. so I have um, even though I have pretty feminine titles for my books and things like that and it's geared towards women I have a lot of male readers especially my military um, brother and things like that they read it they're like this is so good and they're just like I didn't know this side of you because I never got to see the really soft side of you just because of the field I was in and what I was doing. And I wanted to touch upon that because <laughs> being in the Air Force, that's obviously military, it's more, I mean, you don't get to be, I'm not saying you don't get to be feminine, no. but it's it's certainly a different. It's very different. Um, I was security forces, which is military police, and I did that for a number of years. I deployed to Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, a number of different places in the country and you know outside of the country and um they saw the sergeant they saw the non-commissioned officer they saw the strong I must be tough type mm -hmm. woman so a lot of them didn't get to see the soft genuine underside of the heart fashionista they, yeah all so that other it's stuff. very funny when they, they like see me on Facebook or Instagram and it just like I literally have one of my brothers because I call them all family